stupid. <laughs> Hey guys, what's up? Just short tutorial as my last video reached 10 likes. If you don't already know, this is my weird ass voice. Um, yeah, so that's it. For this tutorial, you will need magic bullet looks and sapphire plugins. I'll link both in the description as well as any other material you need for this project. If you don't already know, also, I edit on DaVinci Resolve on the laptop. So, the recording will most likely be extremely light, so just bear with me. Alright, so first of all, you're gonna get your song. Uh, this is the project which I worked on. <coughs> so first of all, you're gonna get your song. Uh, use a throwback song for this one. It's so long, y'all probably heard it. I try to put it, like, rather low, because as you reach the top, it starts becoming ear rape. Uh, yeah, I'll do a preview now. Okay. So that's the ear button. Now, so I have started off. I faded the intro in and then added S blur. I keyframed the amount from 0 0.017 down to 0 as my ident transitions out of the scene. This ident I made from a YouTube video that I'll link down in the description too. Uh, After Effects will also be needed for this ident. Go along all the way. I have my velocity added. I don't use Twixter, I use Optic Flow. So you go, so let's say you don't you don't have your inspector open yet. You open your inspector, you go down to the bottom, click on retime and scaling, and then change it to optical flow. You don't need to change any of the motion estimation because uh it should look fine as it is and it'll probably make my laptop crack. Alright, so first of all, I have black bars here. I tend to crop mine 100 frames. Uh, since I'm previewing it in quarter resolution though, it's only gonna pop up as... <coughs> Shoot, this is not right. It's only gonna pop up as 25 frames, because quarter of 100, 25, right? Yeah, so basically I faded them with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 frames. 5 frames from 0 to 25. And then I have this glitch overlay. Turn the opacity down to 35 and change the composite mode to add. It's all in the inspector over here. Open up inspector, open up composite, composite mode, change it to add, and change the opacity to 35. Then you get this nice like highlighted look it's not like just a solid thing but uh, so down to the main part of this effect you have your magic bullet looks so you can just go into your open effects and search up looks once you have magic bullet looks downloaded but once you download it you have to restart your resolve otherwise it's not going to show up so i have my looks i have the strength faded in with five frames so one two three four five yes five frames faded in so you can go click on edit look and just wait for it to load i'll just start from the beginning just delete all of this so i have my hsl colors you so it looks like this first you open up your tools drag in your hsl colors to post since there's tabs for different parts of the uh videos and therefore you kind of like layers that's how it really works so you have your hsl colors uh I kind of follow the color of the builds as there's quite a lot of it and it just looks really nice when every it's like a half half ratio so i'm gonna turn down the saturation for everything and i mean everything so everything saturation is down and the color of the build will be blue right so you just up the saturation to plus 100 instead of zero then you can up the lightness because later what we're gonna do we're gonna add curves so once you add the curves you can put it either before or after it doesn't matter so basically this is a graph on how bright the pixels are so the brighter the pixels higher up so if i click on here drag it down then the brighter pixels will become darker you see used to be bright over here it's now dark so what i'm gonna do is make the brighter pixels brighter and i'm gonna make the darker pixels darker so i get this nice glow in the dark kind of feel and then uh so you can then drag on your hue slash saturation uh every time you do this you have to open and close tools and you cannot edit it unless you open and close your controls either controls are on the top right so uh like this looks pretty good but if you want you can change the color for me i changed the color to yellow so i get this nice honeycomb feel that's what i call it anyways uh for now i'm gonna put it to red now uh we then move on to length so firstly i'm gonna put on vignette so i made the hsl colors brighter for the blue so that i can add a vignette on the outside so keep all the settings the same what i normally do is turn up the amount and then if i want to i can lower the vignette like this so we have it centered on the middle so the brighter parts will be in the middle and that's where you'll be focusing then we can also add in the chromatic aberration it has to be on lens if you put it on post it's gonna look like 
this and you have your weird hsl stuff going on so if you drag it on lens the hsl colors also desaturate it and the curves and through saturation also adjust it so that looks much better and so that it kind of blends in all right next we have edge softness this just helps along with the vignette to make it a lot smoother on the outside so i just leave the rest of the settings alone and put the blur size to one by the way just double click to adjust the values you can see a bit of softness on the outside it isn't too much it's just there now finally honestly for me this is optional you can drag on the fusion uh you can decide it really depends it's just like something you can add on i just put it quite low turn the glow up a bit down yeah i normally put it like leave it normal the only thing i really adjust is the size if I, I don't normally put it too high but it does give you this nice like colorized glow effect so if you want you can i'll just put it around here for now just to make it not look as sharp so uh it's quite a long process but uh you get this you can also make presets for it if you want uh yeah that's basically it. so here we have our magic bullet look so we faded it in shape uh with the strength oh my god english next we go for the shake uh this is sapphire shake s underscore shake so you will need sapphire plugins which will be linked in the description below uh <clears throat> so this is a very fast y pre-shake as you can see around here if you watch over here you can see it moving up and down yes um so i leave most of the settings alone i just turn the y random random amplitude down because once you turn that down there will be no y shake because the wave and random amp will both be turned off so i just turn the x shake down y shake is fine there is no z or tilt shake on at this moment with the default settings the new version of sapphire is not needed as we won't be using time um so i just have the frequency at 27 i'm pretty sure it's like at 7 or 8 at first so you just bump it up to 27 and keep hearing the amplitude from zero all the way up to one at the keyframe of the kill next i have my post kill shake i turn the frequency down to three to around between 2.5 and 3 keyframe the amplitude all the way up to five and keyframe it to zero at the end of one second by the way to do 60 frames you hold you hold fn and oh my god no you hold shift and your arrow key since i'm using 60 percent keyboard i have to hold shift fn and l which would bring me 60 seconds forward not 60 seconds 60 frames so i have my shake oh yeah by the way for the shape i turn down both x and y random amp there is no need to turn down the wave amp because it's already off and then i turn the tilt shape turn the wave amp to one that's all you need to do no other settings in the tilt shape that is fine then moving on i have my second shake it uses the same settings as the pre-shake but instead of keyframing it from 1 I keyframe it from 0 0.5 and make it 30 frames long and keyframe it to 0 so I have this nice like stumbling effect then finally this distort effect that gives me my RGB uh, so basically I keyframe it from 1.5 I don't need to change any other settings just keyframe it from 1.5 to 0 at the end of the adjustment clip by the way I use adjustment clips as if you do them in fusion the time remapping is affected so that is it I also use no I did not use blur because that was from the start oh yeah uh, finally I use S monochrome I keyframe it from 0 0.5 to 1 uh, for the mix with source that gives it a bit of desaturated effect and it comes back to light um for my velocity it is right here i will get it uh i will use a random clip just drag it onto the timeline a bit so here we have so we have your kill so you drag it along to the kill oops uh turn the audio down a bit for sure so you have this and then drag it all the way back to when you see the amber drop so it's four right now you see it just turned three on three you go here you go 25 frames add a speed point but if you add speed points you press ctrl r to open this up and then you go 25 frames back so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 1 2 3 4 5 so you have this so you go over here go three frames back so we actually want 22 frames of 25 so we've gone 25 frames back so we have 25 frames will be over here so we go three back to get 20 frame 20 two frames of 25 so you drag the remainder up to 292 around here and we go 10 frames forward so after your 10 frames forward we just drag on to this and bring it up by the way to open the read time speed up you press shift c and then at the bottom click on the arrow and at the bottom you can choose read time speed you do not need to curve this because it will not look good uh and then so after the kill our slow mo we can put it all the way to 30 because we have optical flow so we can just watch it the color tap 
And there we go. Anyways, uh, so I'm not gonna reveal my sound effects yet. And ten another ten likes for sound effects. And see you. Hope you enjoy. I got money on me now, I had to count up